we're going to be changing the anchor arrangement on this Blackwatch 26. Originally, the boat was built with a below deck anchoring system below this hatch. And what we want to do is install a electric windlass so that the anchor can be raised and lowered from the helm. And instead of modifying the entire foredeck, what we're gonna do is use the existing anchor locker hatch that you see here and install a below deck anchor system. And what I have here set up in front of me is a mock-up of the arrangement that we're going to use up in the boat. And what we've done is we've fit a plywood template of the shelf that we're gonna glass into the anchor locker. And you can see that we've got the cutout already set up for the Lumar V700 windlass and the center line marked. Once we verify that this fit and that everything was the layout that we wanted up in the boat, we then cut out a piece of half inch thick G10 plate of the exact same shape. And then again, pre-drilled for the windlass and marked the center line. And I've got it set up here on top of these uh, canisters so that I could install the windlass and show you what the layout will be. So this is the Lumar V700 windlass. It's a horizontal windlass. It's low profile, which is what we wanted because we are installing this below deck. We didn't want it to be tall. Uh, it drops into these holes back here. And just to orientate you, what we're looking at is this would be the anchor locker bulkhead right up to the deck, and then this would be the bow of the boat. Um, so we've got the anchor windlass as far aft as we can up against the bulkhead. This is a standard Lumar anchor roller for our Delta 22 pound anchor. That's gonna bolt right here. We've already cut an opening in the bow for the roller to, um, to go through the bow. And then here is the Delta 22 pound anchor. So that's gonna slide up in here. And then the chain goes into the windlass around and then down into the chain locker, which is below here. So the first step is to install the G10 anchor locker shelf. And the way we do that is we mix up some polyester laminating resin. We add our methyl ethyl ketone hardener, and then we add in some silica thickener to create a thick paste. And what we do is we add some of that thick paste to the front and back edges, and then lay the shelf down in place, and squish out any extra thickened resin. And then we go back and clean up the edges with a radius putty knife so that we leave ourselves with a radius fillet so that we can add our fiberglass tabbing front and back to glass the shelf in place. This is the fiberglass tabbing we're gonna use. So we're gonna glass the G10 shelf in with two layers of 17 ounce Biax, uh, top and bottom, front and back of the shelf. The easiest way to do that, because the anchor locker is a little awkward and small, is what we're gonna do is use a scrap piece of cardboard and we're gonna wet out both layers of cloth before we go up to the boat. So we've wet out the first layer, we've wet out the back of the second layer. Now what I'm gonna do is when I put the two together, I'm gonna stagger the edges back because what I don't want is to, if I had both edges lined up, then I'm gonna get a big bump in the boat. So we stagger the edges back so we have a somewhat of a tapered edge when we laminate the two pieces in there. A squeegee just to get out some of the extra resin and get all the air bubbles out as well. You can tell that the cloth is completely wetted out when it turns mostly clear or opaque. Then we take our wetted pieces of cloth up into the boat, apply a little resin to the areas that we're going to apply the cloth to, put the cloth in place and then dab on some more resin with a paintbrush and work out any bubbles and then make sure the glass is nice and smooth. We will repeat the process for wetting out the laminates on a scrap piece of cardboard and apply them to the aft end of the shelf as well as the underside. With the shelf in place and the glass work complete, we're ready to use gel coat to finish off the area. We've catalyzed some white gel coat to touch up some of the areas around the perimeter of the hatch and we're gonna add some gray pigment to the gel coat to create a light gray color which will match our existing anchor locker color. The application is pretty straightforward. We're just going to pour and brush on a single coat. We decided to use gel coat to finish off the chain locker just because it's a little bit more durable than a painted surface. While Mike is finishing up the glass and the gel coat work up in the anchor locker, I have laid out all the Lumar components that come with the Lumar windlass. 
So what we have here is uh, the battery, where we get all the power for the windlass. We have the main 35 amp breaker, and then at the helm, we're going to have the rocker switch, so the person at the helm can operate the windlass. Then we're traveling up to the anchor locker. What you see here is the, the DC controller that controls the direction of the windlass. We have a mounting gasket that goes underneath the windlass, and then a backing plate that goes underneath the shelf. This is the windlass itself here, arranged right behind the Lumar anchor roller. And then we're also going to add a pair of deck switches, one up and one down, so that you can stand up at the bow and operate the windlass up and down while you're anchoring. Now we're going to go up on the boat. We're starting back here where our main batteries are. And this boat has a battery for the port and starboard engine, uh, one battery each. And we also have a third house battery. But what we're going to do is we're going to connect the anchor windlass to the engine uh, battery switch so that when the engine battery switch is turned on, that gives us power to the anchor windlass. The theory being that whenever you're using the windlass, your engines are usually running, so you have plenty of power. So what we've done is we've installed our 35 amp breaker. That's connected to the main uh, number eight red wire that runs up to the anchor windlass of the bow. We have the yellow ground wire that we run directly to the negative common post between the three batteries. And then we've connected the positive feed from the breaker over here to the engine battery switch so that when the engine switch is turned on we then have power to our anchor windlass. And we've also installed the rocker switch outboard of the steering wheel which will allow the helmsman to operate the windlass back here from the steering wheel position. So here are the main red and yellow power feeds that come from the battery bay back aft that we just talked about. Uh, the red is connected to the breaker, the yellow goes directly to the battery negative post, and then this white wire here contains three wires which are running from the rocker switch at the helm. But before we make these wiring connections, we're going to go ahead and install the anchor roller and the windlass so that we have all the equipment in place. We then connect the main power wires to the DC controller. You should refer to the Lumar installation manual for the complete wiring details. Now we're going to install the up and down foot switches. We've located them on the foredeck and we're going to use the Lumar paper template which will locate the three screws and the hole for the wire. We transfer the location of the screw holes and the wire hole with a punch through the paper template and then we drill for the three screw holes and then go back with a larger diameter drill to drill the larger hole for the wire. After the holes have been drilled, we use a countersink to chamfer the top edge of each one of the holes so that we don't chip out any gel coat when we drive a screw in or create any chafe for the wire as it passes through the deck. Once all the holes are ready, we pre-feed the wire through the hole and apply uh, the total bond bedding around each one of the screw holes and the wire hole. Try not to use too much total bond because we're really just trying to create a watertight seal and you want to minimize the amount of cleanup of any material that gets squished out around the edges. We then drop the trim ring around the perimeter and then put our three screws in through the trim ring and tighten up the screws to complete the installation. The finishing touch will be a small bead of total bond around the edges of the roller as it passes through the bow of the boat. With the installation complete, a single operator can now safely raise or lower the anchor from either the helm position or the bow. Lowering the anchor is very easy from the helm position, but when raising the anchor, it's sometimes advantageous to be at the bow so that you can see the anchor as it comes up and ensure that it's not twisted or fouled. As you can see, the Lumar windlass system makes anchor handling easy and safe for a single operator and allows you to spend more time enjoying yourself on the water.